Hello and welcome to this ET Now special. We have a big interview for, for all of you today. It is with India's most valuable startup and the world's most valuable edtech startup. That's right, it is Baiju's. And joining me is the founder and CEO, Baiju Ravindran, as well as the co founder, Divya Gopalnath. I'd like to point out this is the first time the power couple have ever sat down together to give an interview together. They are in one frame together and only on ET now. Baiju Ravindran and Divya Gokulnath, welcome. Thank you so much for your time. Baiju, I'm going to begin with you. Um, what a run it has been. Now, valued at $18 billion plus, acquisitions of more than $2.5 billion since inception, an IPO very much on the cards. Uh, first up, I want to ask you, how closely do you keep tracking valuations? It is often joked that uh, Baiju's is now behaving like a private equity player. Like for us, it's, it's, it's very, like the valuation growth has been uh, like, uh, has helped us to uh, like find the right blend of organic and inorganic growth. But it's, it's been about uh, the valuation at the end of the day, it's, it's just a number, right? For you to consistently increase valuation, you need to create value. You need to uh, also follow it up with value creation uh, for starting with students. And if, if students benefit, then parents are happy paying for it. And that makes everybody happy. So uh, in, in terms of uh, inorganic growth, specific, we strongly believe this is uh, a sector which has been neglected for many years by, again, investors and everybody because it's very difficult to show short-term results in, in, a, in a sector like this because it's not just about for an entertainment platform. If it's just about showing engagement and getting users hooked onto the platform, here we need to do both. We need to make sure that students are engaged on the platform and uh, an engagement which results in effectiveness and outcomes. So And, and there's parents... And students themselves need to see progress and in, in terms of how they, uh, like they need to like the subject that 50% is done if they like the subject and if they like the teachers or the format. And, and that should result in better marks and better grades because whatever said or done, though we talk about love for learning, uh, most of the Indian parents being, uh, they, need, they still need to, they will see progress as improvement in marks. And that's where we've been able to find that right balance between keeping it engaging without losing its effectiveness. Now, uh, we have so much conviction that these are very early days for technology in the sector. We have, uh, and uh, uh, even the offline first segments like test prep segment, uh, we saw an opportunity to create, define and create a hybrid offering where we'll find the best of both. Uh, that's the reason for uh, Baiju's and Akash coming together. Our, our online first approach and their offline first approach will help us to, uh, gives us the best chance of creating the right hybrid model. When you say like, because we can give access to star teachers online, I'm giving you an example on what is what that hybrid format can be. Uh, so weekday students will learn online weekends. Once uh, centers reopen, they'll come to the nearby center uh, where they will interact with the neighborhood local teacher. And that's also important. Like, and also that rigor intensity required uh, will be provided in the offline classroom. The actual test environment when they are taking these mock tests will be critical. So, uh, like that's the reason why we entered, decided to uh, like strongly enter the test prep segment through a hybrid offering. And that explains the Akash acquisition. I'm, I'm going like taking specific, uh, whereas an online first segment like reskilling, upskilling, professional skilling segment. Uh, now we wouldn't have entered these segments if uh, like when we saw that there is a much bigger opportunity, uh, short term, mid term and long term. And like you will see that uh, uh, this is one of those sectors where you won't find many companies who have invested even a few hundred million dollars in creating the right product. Now, you'll find a lot of platforms which just connects tutors and students. But what we have created is uh, a strong product approach, productized approach, even for the services offering we have in Baiju's Future School. Uh, we have been able to uh, uh, productize, use technology in the right format to personalize. So very, very bullish on uh, both organic growth, which uh, the, our core segments and core markets continue growing at uh, 100 percentage uh, and will do be like that for the next many years because nowhere close to saturation. All the businesses are on the right side of the right part of the curve. And then that's because that's what I was telling you that these are, these are still very early days in terms of uh, technology in education. 
Now, we've always focused on and over-indexed on the ed part of ed tech early days. And that's the reason for, uh, like, you'll, you'll something common with most of the large ed tech companies, you'll find that there is always a student-centric approach because it's been built by teacher entrepreneurs. Like, you, you scan through the top five large, uh, like education ed tech companies globally, you'll find this as a, something common. Now, it's, it's not about if you are just reaching in the offline format and if you are not... Uh, like innovating enough to bring technology, uh, you won't scale like this. That's something which we've been able to do in the last uh, six years, ever since we moved online. Okay, we have done this, uh, maybe I'll uh, repeat, we have done these acquisitions or integrations to uh, enter new segments, enter new markets. And uh, uh, since we've been able to very successfully integrate the initial ones, uh, that gives us a lot of confidence, our investors a lot of confidence in uh, uh, continue scaling both organically and inorganically. And uh, Divya, you know, when you look at the acquisitions that have been made, just the way Baiju was pointing out, uh, you've succeeded in the forward integration and they seem to be in all kind of verticals when it comes to ed tech, whether it is from children, what you, you know, and e-learning from books like Epic or going all the way up to Akash, which was a billion dollar, uh, you know, acquisition for uh, competitive exam. So Divya, where is Baiju's headed? Is it going to be having its hand in every jar? Are you looking at an ecosystem that from the time a child is five till the professional career, mid-career, Baiju's has something to offer? So the focus is to be a part of a student's learning journey right from the beginning because when we know that when the fundamentals are right, when a child starts uh, loving to learn from their early years, if we can retain that childlike curiosity as they grow up, then you're surely creating a lifelong learner, active learner and a learner for life. Now, that being said, if you look at the Baiju's portfolio of products, uh, it encompasses across ages and each of these partnerships, and I will not call it acquisitions, right? These are partnerships where teams have come together, products have come together to make the end, end experience for the student much better, stronger and deliver even better learning outcomes. So all of them have been at the end increasing value for the student now be it the early learning product where uh, now with the white hat junior uh, teachers we are able to have a one on one offering one on one learning for math uh, be it coding or for the middle age schools where middle age children where we are able to have a new two teacher model where we are able to have a 1 is to 25 classroom and teach them or if it's for you know the hybrid model which we've done for test prep with the help of akash uh, like Baiju said, which is typically an offline first segment, but now needs to slowly transition to become a hybrid model so that you're able to put the student in the driver's seat so that they are able to learn as per their comfort, as per their timing, their, you know, their space, their style. So it's all about being able to create flexibility for the learner, create having a portfolio of products which can uh, cater to every type of learner be and not leave anybody out because See, if you if, most of the uh, pro, most of the products aim uh, to help the top ten percent of the students, but if you're trying to create something which appeals across different different types of learners, you need to give it in so many different formats. So that's always been the focus. Can we can we help a student yeah. learn in their own way? Can we personalize it to their style and size of learning? And the minute you start bringing in so many. Uh, different types of products and services and offerings, you're able to make it, you're able to give choices to the students so that they can learn as per their comfort zone. Baiju, you know, you've grown so fast and so rapidly the last couple of years. Uh, you got the product right, obviously. You've had investors chase you. Look at the valuation you're getting. You uh, succeeded, as you're saying, with forward integration via the m &A route. You're also growing globally. Have you got the pace right? What if you continue to grow at this pace? Because, you know, we've seen very often the companies that grow too fast then also die as fast. Yeah, so uh, just to uh, now, uh, like, it, it, in terms of our approach, what we have taken, like, and that's exactly the reason why the right blend of organic and inorganic approach here, because with all these acquisitions, what we are getting is lot more found lot, we are we have significantly increased the founder mentality at the top uh, companies struggle to scale because if they try doing it with the same team if uh, the the founders and the core team if they get at, so attached to what they do and if they start believing that they know everything and uh, like and try doing everything on on their own that's when uh, 
uh, like they struggle to scale. Now, in our case, if you see what we have done in in all these with with all these integrations, we have also been able to scale the management bandwidth. More importantly, that founder mentality because companies uh, struggle to scale uh, not necessarily because of external reasons. Internally. Uh, like a lot of cases, you'll find founders themselves losing the founder mentality. A lot of companies struggle to retain their co-founders itself beyond the first three, four years. The fact that we have a large, though uh, two of us are called co-founders, we have a, we, we really have six co-founders, those who've been there for 10 years now. And that is uh, a rarity in the, in, 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 in the Indian or in, in any startup ecosystem. You struggle to uh, retain your first two, three immediate co-founders itself in the, because now, we have been able to now growth and we have been able to give all of them enough opportunity to grow as entrepreneurs within those who have been created in the system. And more importantly, we have uh, very successfully integrated this uh, exceptional entrepreneurs through these acquisitions. So it's uh, uh, like we kind of get undue credit. I kind of get undue credit for what we do. But uh, the fact is there is there is a large team of entrepreneurs, owners, found like those who have, got, have this founder mentality. And that's the... That's that's very important. Otherwise, as an individual, as a team, as core team, the same team who will get you from one to ten alone won't get you from ten to hundred. So, yeah, like multiple pillars for growth, not just because of these multiple formats, but we are also getting uh, multiple management teams. And one thing where I will, uh, what we have done uh, very well is we have integrated platforms. That's easy. We have integrated people, founders, uh, like wherever, like. Nine out of ten times, they have stayed well beyond the contractual commitment, and so it's that uh, allows us to scale very, very fast. And uh, if you ask me, uh, the the opportunity we have and and the pace of growth is, is still there is a lot of scope for improvement. So, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's it's like like we have created an ecosystem where entrepreneurs can thrive, or intrapreneurs can thrive, and I don't do much or yeah. we don't do much. Oh, how modest. I want to ask you, I'm going to I have something to ask at the end and I'm going to end the interview. So stay tuned for this, ladies and gentlemen, that how have uh, Baiju and Divya stayed as modest and humble as you're seeing them? That's right at the end. So stay tuned. Uh, but Baiju, you know, uh, you said your last publicly disclosed valuation was $16.5 billion. Is it still $16.5 billion? And has your phone and email gone completely bonkers after what we have seen in China? You know, with China slamming its consumer internet companies and what it's had to say about edtech and all of that, it's India is being seen as a beneficiary of that. A lot of the capital will now want to come to India. It's looking for a new home. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the optimistic side of you. There are always two sides to the story. I have uh, most been more edtech unicorns created in India. And, uh, and that's a clear indication. More capital chase. Last year, $10 billion plus went into Chinese edtech startups. So it's a it's suddenly become a much bigger opportunity for Indian edtech startups to redefine the space globally. I always used to tell India and China together will define the space. But now we have a, a real chance of creating uh, uh, global companies coming out of India in this sector. And this will be uh, like, mm. uh, like if you're able to execute well, uh, like I'll be able to tell that edtech will be defined by Indian companies. For most of the other sectors, we kind of uh, uh, follow what is uh, done in other markets, but still, but in this case, uh, if you see, we, we are pioneering most of what we do. And uh, if we continue executing like this, uh, that uh, the, the sector, uh, like the global champions can come out of India. And uh, like, again, like I won't say we are there, but we are on the right path. So like in, in terms of... Uh, so that's that's a big opportunity and also a responsibility and if if we can do it i'm sure many more people will get uh, inspired and they will follow the path they were coming on that you know uh, in india we've seen very often uh, the me too model as we call it you know we said this is the amazon of india you know things like that but here baiju is being talked about like that globally and we're seeing the mushrooming of so many edtech startups. In the last couple of weeks, uh, we got two new edtech unicorns. Before that, we only had another two, right? Eduritus and uh, uh, Upgrad are the new edtech startups. Is this a many winner take all market? If there are so many students that there is so much more place for so many more companies to start up, especially in this sector. And 
I think it's it's good for all of us if that happens because that we will be uh, technology in education is about bringing together the right pedagogy which is content mixing it with the right kind of media so that it becomes engaging and leveraging technology to make it personalized effective and create accessibility so bringing these three things together and how well it's brought together because all of these three functionalities is what we built in house the teams are what we have uh, scaled globally we also have teams for r and d in india and globally and i think it's about can this if this is brought together well that is what is going to differentiate a great edtech company from say from say a company that is not able to make it because it's it's ultimately about are you able to create high quality content uh, and using technology uh, and being constantly updated because technology is constantly changing we also need to innovate ourselves right so uh, if you ask me finally if we if we stay complacent uh, we never do that we we every day we get up and think how can we do better our benchmarks yeah. are ourselves and like you rightly said we are pioneers yeah. in this segment so there is no playbook there is no rule book we've written it all uh, you know this is not a cut copy paste model of of anything so uh, when that happens uh, there are a lot of experiments to be done but uh, one thing that works even today is that we still have a very startup like mindset so the time between ideation and execution is minimal so when we think about we want to do something you would see us do it lightning fast and i think being agile no matter how big you grow and being rooted no no matter how you know like however big however i'm talking in terms of team size or portfolio of products so that is key to uh, to not just starting the game but staying in the game if you can stay in the game for decades that's what you know, and if you are able to make an impact on students that's what i'll call success but uh, long way to go before we reach anywhere close to that in terms of uh, but the good part is if if you this is one of those sectors if you do good you'll end up doing well and if you do well you'll end up doing good so that uh, it it attracts a uh, lot of like minded people because uh, uh, this we have that unfair advantage of being in a sector like that and that is what uh, has helped us to create uh, a, a large team of people who will think who think like this and though we started with six co-founders today i'll say that we are maybe 15 co-founders through these acquisitions and uh, you will see us and and the approach here is to create something which will last mm. for decades and that's our biggest competitive advantage we are thinking of decades and not years though uh, a, a, a large ipo is on the cards and that's only uh, the next important milestone uh, you will see us driving it for uh, uh, as long as we can do it and i we think uh, that time is on our side in this case because uh, most of us have uh, like decades left if not years and as long as we are able to do a good job and uh, justify that you will see us driving this for uh, and that's what will differentiate uh, now time will tell whether we are able to tell that so and and maybe uh, 20 years down the line uh, when uh, we uh, create this movement of creating active learners and as i've told you we want students to learn because they want to learn we want to create students those who want to learn and not because not, not those who are forced to learn and unfortunately uh, we we are still living in a country where it's learning driven by fear of exams and not love for learning so it will take a lot of time to change that by due the next milestone is going to be the ipo as you said uh, preempting my next question uh, what kind of a timeline are we expecting for the ipo what kind of a valuation and uh, are you going to list in india or are you going to list overseas so we will we will have uh, our ambition is global uh, but uh, still uh, like india is we we are based out of india so we we still uh, Uh, most of our users are in india and all, all the segments in india is is growing at uh, uh, like a very fast pace though international we have added the uh, segments or pro- offerings in international markets just to call out in us itself there will be like three different businesses where we'll do 100 million each in our first year of operations which is this year uh, in india listing over the next 12 to 15 months is 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 uh, is how we are uh, though it's the, those timelines are not final but we are thinking of that that kind of timelines from a valuation point of view what, what i can tell you is that we have a fundamentally very strong business model growing at uh, which has grown at 100 percentage for close to 100 percentage for the last 5 years that's been the cagr for last 5 years uh and that's getting accelerated like with uh, because this is the first year where uh, these integrations or acquisitions will start contributing or will uh, con- contributing to our revenue growth and most of the models most of the business models are profitable for us 
uh, will close. We uh, are aiming to close this year at at least ten thousand crores plus, and that's significant growth over the last year. And uh, so, the listing valuation, as I told you, is just a number. You will see as that it's it's not just about that. We are we will build something which will be fast growing, but also sustainable. And uh, I, I'm I'm not. Uh, like uh, companies like ours will always get the right value is is how i'll put it across without putting a number to it you are looking at a global listing or are you now looking at an india listing particularly after what's happened with zomato like in, in indian markets are also uh, uh like appreciating uh, like fast growing tech startups so india listing is going to be uh, our uh, first option now even global listing is an option for us but uh, now that's a call which we have to take but uh, if you ask me today like india listing is our first option being a strong mm. consumer brand and, and most of our users are in india now that listing is not just for to just to give, to give exit to early investors we don't need to do a public listing because there is so much demand in the private markets and uh, at that significantly higher value than last round but uh, uh it's that's also a big aspiration creating a large public company coming out of india uh making sure that lot more people are becoming part of that growth rather than uh, let's say a limited set of investors getting benefit of the company growth uh having a large shareholder base those who also get the benefit of the growth is a is 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 is, is a big big aspiration so divya 12 to 15 months in their first preference global listing certainly not being listed out you just heard by ju also talking about maybe looking at 10000 crore rupee plus uh, closing for the year would you be profitable at the end of this uh, financial year as all the acquisitions start to pay off or that's some till some time away all our uh, indian businesses uh, the products have always been profitable the investment has always been for the future the investment has always been to expand into more geographies and to create more products either through the organic route or the inorganic route so like in, to objectively talk about it so 10000 plus crores of revenue is what we are targeting uh, and and uh, uh, like we are very confident we'll be able to do that and with a 20% margin of that even with uh, that's considering the fact that we'll still be investing in new markets but the uh, Uh, we we have created a very capital efficient business model uh, because even our core model it just took uh, the fast growing mm. it tech, it just took uh, four years for us to create a uh, brand awareness segment awareness and still create a fast growing profitable business model in india the core market is profitable most of the businesses we have acquired are very efficient business models uh, the on, only in new markets we are investing uh, and we will invest uh, a couple of 100 million dollars over the next 12 to 18 months to create uh, to replicate a similar strategy so that uh, eventually we move to an organic acquisition model so but otherwise uh, uh, it's it's fast growing but it's not growth at any cost divya i was asking uh, have you and byju become like investment bankers in the last uh, 12 to 24 months i think in the last 12 to 24 months we've tried to increase our family and uh, ultimately see whether we can become bigger uh, and stronger <laughs> but then definitely better all together because then we can create a bigger impact because see it, it's easy to start a mission driven company but the real challenge is to stay stay mission driven and we've been able to do that by by having a fantastic team like i just said all our co-founders are have played such a crucial role equal role in bringing us to where we are today and also what we've done over the last 12 to 24 months in terms of the new set of entrepreneurs intrapreneurs who've joined in to make the whole uh, the team the company even stronger so that uh, finally we are able to create something which is sustainable long term and will last for decades is it still day one at the company it's every day is uh, is day one but uh, can day one be better than day zero is what we look at it as so So with that I'd like to thank both of you for giving us so much time today on ET now we look forward to many more interviews uh, I know they're very rare to come by and I hope to have both of you back here right here on the channel Thank you Nayantara Thank you
को पावर्ड बाय जीई बिल्डिंग अ वर्ल्ड दैट वर्क्स। व्हेन यू आर इंडिया मोस्ट एक्सपीरियंस्ड